read one time about a, an Eskimo up in Alaska who was being interviewed by an anthropologist. Wanted to know about the Eskimo belief systems. This was a shaman who was being interviewed. And the shaman put up with the questions for a while, and then he finally said to the anthropologist, Look, we don't believe, we fear. And that's what all of their practices come from, is dealing with their fears. There's a much more solid grounding than questions of belief. That's why everyone comes to the practice. They have fears of various, various kinds. Fears of illness, fears of loneliness, fears of suffering, one kind or another. It's something you don't have to ask people, do you believe in dangers out in the world? Well, there are dangers. It's something we don't have to discuss, something we don't have to argue about. There are dangers in the world. The question is understanding where the dangers are and where there's true security from them. Because if you look for security outside, you're ending up, you're setting yourself up for a fall. There's that famous passage where Ratabala, who's one of the Buddhist disciples, is talking to a king. And he points out to the king that the world is without protection, the world is without anything of its own. The world is insatiable, a slave to craving. In other words, how much, no matter how much strength or security you seem to build up for yourself, there's never enough. Because starting with your own body, you, in the quest for security, your body is probably the biggest traitor there is. It never asks permission. It gets old, grows sick, dies. It's inevitable. And so whatever strength you build up is going to be subject to aging. In that particular passage, the king talks about how he's now 80 years old. When he was young, 20 or 30, he said he seemed to have the strength of 10 men. But now he means to put his foot one place and it goes someplace else. He can't even control his own foot. Ratabal also points out to him that when the king is sick, can the king, even though he's king, can he command his courtiers that they share out the pain of his illness? He has to face the pain alone. No matter how much wealth he builds up, he can't take it with him after he dies. And even then, the fact that these treasures he has, he's so much in terms of wealth, power. If someone came along to me, hey, there's another kingdom over to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, that you could conquer. The king would go ahead and try to conquer it. If someone came and said, hey, on the other side of the ocean, there's another kingdom that you could, you could conquer, the king would take that too. There's never anything, there's never the word enough in terms of wealth, power, on the external level. And the, Buddha, the question that the Buddha faced was, so can you find wealth, security inside? Can you find strength inside? Because one of the things we're facing right now is the question of, when people feel threatened, when they feel in a position of weakness, they start doing all kinds of evil, and they try everything they can to justify it to themselves. That's usually where most evil comes from, when people feel they're in a position that, where they're threatened. And if you identify anything as you or yours that is opening you up to that kind of threat, well, there's always that question, can you really believe in your commitment to being good? Can you really believe in your commitment to being a moral person? Because when something close to home that you really hold on to as being you or yours gets threatened, delusion comes in. Your perspective changes. Can you trust yourself so that won't happen? So you have to look inside to see if there's any strength you can develop from within so you don't feel threatened. Can you learn how to let go of things that are opening you up to that threat? So that no matter what happens, you can trust yourself. So that there's no fear at all. As the Buddha said, there's four reasons why people fear death. One is because they're attached to the body. Another is because they're attached to sensual pleasures. The third is that they don't really understand the Dharma. They haven't resolved their doubts about the Dharma. 
These are three things that can be cured only through meditation. The other reason for fearing death is when you know that you've harmed other people. Because there's always a fear that comes with, well, maybe there is a punishment for what you've done. Even for people who don't necessarily believe fully in the, prin the principle of karma, there's something in the back of the mind knows that there's got to be a, some settling of the score. Somehow. They just don't know how. And they would prefer to deny it, but then simply denying things like that doesn't mean that they're not true. That kind of fear can be overcome through observing the precepts. But even then, the question of your precepts, how trustworthy are they? If you haven't yet put the mind in a position where it's not threatened. I mean, the greatest security there can be in the world is not knowing that your belongings are secure or that your body is secure, because those things are always going to slip away. It's knowing that no matter what the situation is, you can trust your own mind. You can trust yourself to make the right decision. You can trust yourself not to be swayed by fear. And the only way you can do that is to let go of things that would put you in a position where you would be afraid. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha said, you know, look at your body, look at your feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, even your consciousness. Can you really claim that they're yours? Do they lie under your control? If they're not under your control, why do you latch on to them? It's because of our fear if we don't latch on to these things, there's nothing. But what the Buddha discovered was you let go of these things, and it's not the case that there's nothing. You find the deathless. And that is something that's totally without fear. Can't be threatened, can't be taken away from you. If you speak in terms of strength, okay, it's a strength that will never leave you. You speak in terms of wealth. It's wealth that nobody can take away. You speak in terms of security, okay, it's by definition the secure place. There is nothing more secure. So this is why there's so much emphasis on letting go. Not only because of the immediate suffering that comes when you don't let go, but also because you can't really trust yourself until you have let go. There's always that chance that you suddenly feel threatened and your perspective is going to change. And you start doing things and saying things that you normally wouldn't even, you'd be ashamed to even think of doing. And then when the threat is gone, you look back on what you've done. And there's a lot of regret. So you want to put yourself through the meditation in a position where that's not going to happen, where you can really trust yourself. So you work on building up strength within the mind so that you don't have to depend on things outside. You build up your conviction in terms of the power of your actions. Okay, the good you do will not is not erased. It does it's not for nothing. The effort that it requires is not wasted. When you believe in that principle, basically believe in the principle of karma, skillful intentions do lead to happiness. Unskillful ones are going to lead to pain, suffering. You're going to be very careful about what you do. Persistence comes as the next strength. You just keep at it because you realize the law of karma is not like a traffic law. So it's not that they're enforced only on from 4.30 to 6 on Thursday afternoon. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You've got to be very careful, very consistent. This is why you need to develop your powers of mindfulness. That's the next strength. It's what we're working on right now as we meditate. Being mindful of the breath, keeping it in mind, being alert to the breath, watching what's happening, making whatever adjustments are needed so the mind can settle down. That gives rise to the next strength, which is concentration. Once the mind settles down, it can start seeing things clearly for what they are. In particular, it begins to see, okay, that through clinging there's, there's got to be suffering. 
not only immediate suffering in the present, but clinging leads you to do things that cause even more suffering on into the future. They talk about a person who practices the Dharma as being a warrior. Well, one of the lessons of being a warrior is which battles are not worth fighting. The battle of clinging to the body, the battle of clinging to the aggregates, it's one that's not worth fighting. If you can cut away the battles that are not worth fighting, that lightens your load considerably. And that's one of the secrets of inner strength, is learning how not to waste your strength to devote it to things that really are worthwhile, developing mi mindfulness, developing virtue, developing concentration and discernment. So that you don't have to hold on to things that can be taken away from you, things that will turn on you. And in the course of that, you find yourself letting go also of the whatever potential there was in the mind for doing things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to trust yourself. You find that there's a much stronger sense of self-reliance, self-confidence. When you let go of the things that would make you be a traitor to your own best interests. So this is the path to, to the end of fear. Not only fear of things outside, but also fear of your own potentials for doing things that are unskillful. As you learn to let go, you find that you can trust yourself more and more. And that's the greatest security there is, because the biggest insecurity in life is that sense that you really don't know if you can trust yourself to do the right thing in certain situations. And the greatest security is knowing that you can trust yourself. Because it's a trust that you've tested through the practice. And you finally reach the point where you realize, yes, it is solid. Not a trust based on wishing or wishful thinking, but it's something that you've seen really is reliable. That's what we're practicing for. <laughs>